So Pete, let me start with you. Uh, we've talked to you about KKR's theory about acquisitions at this point. Explain why you picked book publishing, because there's a lot of people who think that that's not a great business. It's a wonderful thing, but it's not necessarily a great growth business. So it's more stable than, than you might think. So book publishing, the volumes are stable and they've survived the internet, they've survived mobile, in a way that a lot of old line media businesses have not and industries have not. If you look at their content library at Simon & Schuster, the company's been around 100 years, they've published everything from The Great Gatsby to Catch-22, It's you could not replace their content library. Now on top of that, what gets us excited is it was this unloved gem of a business inside of Paramount. So it did not get an investment, it did not get a lot of attention, and so we looked at it and we said, well, could they do more with audiobooks? What type of operational improvements could there be? You know, Jonathan and I have talked about this. Forecasting demand for a new book is really hard. How many copies of that book are going to be sold is very difficult to predict. We think there's ways to do, bring a little more science to that and also to shrink our supply chain and be more responsive so we're not producing excess books that end up getting thrown out. Employee engagement. Yeah, there's 1,650 employees at, at the company. Fewer than 5% had ownership in the company, which is something we're going to bring to the table around employee engagement and ownership. You know, what's possible if we become the destination of choice for editors, you know, who are effectively talent agents for authors. So then we're going to be the destination of choice for authors. And what this could all unleash in, in now being the only standalone book publishing company out there, this, this could be a big deal. So Jonathan, what about from your side of it, from Simon Schuster's side of it, what does KKR potentially bring to the table? So I understand KKR said they don't want to start picking the books. They don't want to do your job. Well, I mean, first of all, the idea of giving all of the employees a piece of the action, this idea of broad-based ownership has really energized the company. And um, I think it's got all of us rowing together. And I think it, it, was a, it was a jolt of excitement that went through the company when this was announced. And uh, you know, I really credit Pete with, um, with you know, being an, an advocate and an evangelist for this idea. Um, because uh, it is attracting more talent already. We've already been able to hire some, some marquee editors, and, and as Pete said, I mean, those editors are going to attract the authors. Well, explain that part of the business exactly. I mean, they, they want to work harder because they have a piece of the action now. If you get those marquee editors, does that bring in authors that will give you hits? Because my understanding is it is still a hit-driven business. Well, it is a hit-driven business on the front list, but now about half of our sales are coming from backlist, um, books that have been out for more than a year. And so you want the best editors to attract the books that are going to last. And the books that are lasting are easier and easier to sell because of digital marketing. So it's actually a much better business than it's ever been because we can instantly sell books through ebooks or through audio. Um, the other part of the business that's really, really exciting right now is audiobooks because uh, Spotify's gotten into the business. Of course, Audible and Apple are already there. But with Spotify getting into the market, um, it's, uh, our books are reaching an entirely different audience. And when you think about it, only about half of the people in the country will buy a book in a year. But the people who are listening to Spotify, they may be music listeners, they may just be people who aren't really into the habit of reading. Um, last year when we published the Britney Spear Spears memoir, um, we, we set records on Spotify. Um, and, um, and we've sold over a million audiobooks of Britney Spears. So uh, that's a very exciting development for the business. So Pete, you talked about the catalog before, and I was wondering ways to exploit the catalog. It sounds like part of it is new outlets, essentially, new forms of media. What are the margins on that, though? When you go to a Spotify or something, you can't make as much money off of that as you do off a book, I assume. I don't think we want to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to talk about the margins, but I mean, but, but the distribution is, is, uh, is frictionless. So there are no returns with audiobooks, and there are no returns with ebooks. So it's a better way of getting books out there to the public. And it's also instant. You're always going to be able to find it if you're searching for it digitally. That's certainly not as true when you go to your local bookstore. That's yeah, fascinating. AI, we've talked about AI before. How does that help you with publishing? Well, it could be a tool to make authors and editors more productive. I mean, just to be clear, what's not going to happen is we're not going to go start writing books with, with AI. That's something we <laughs> talked about on the front end. It could be a productivity tool. There's so much that's unknown, so we don't know exactly how it might help us be more productive in the future, but it's something we're thinking about and studying. It strikes me this is the first time, I think since 1975, Simon Schuster was not owned by a conglomerate. I mean, going all the way back to Gulf and Western, I believe. 
how does that change your orientation, Jonathan, now that you have somebody who's really focused on book publishing rather than focusing on an awful lot of other businesses? Well, it is true that KKR is going to allow us to invest more in our own business. So there are, there are several engines that drive our growth. One of them, obviously, uh, the, adult, the adult books, but also children's books, um, audio, uh, international, and distribution. We actually distribute books from many other smaller publishers. So those are our five engines of growth. And KKR is going to allow us to invest more in our international distribution and, and more in attracting other clients to distribute. Is there more transparency now for people at Shaman Street about how their business works, about what they're contributing to it, and whether you're succeeding or not succeeding? Absolutely. We are having quarterly shareholder meetings now. And I have to say, uh, before KKR bought us, I was called into a meeting um, with uh, two of the principals uh, at KKR, uh, Richard Sarnoff and Ted Oberwager. And before they bought us, they wanted to make sure that I was on board with the idea of broad-based ownership. And they set up a whole special meeting just to talk to me about this. And I was actually quite surprised. I was incredulous, actually, that they would think that any CEO would be opposed to such a thing. But they said that you know, it is a lot of work. And you have to really communicate um, with the employees and explain all of this to them. And, uh, and it, it actually has been a fair amount of work, but worth it every step of the way. And I really do think that um, it has really changed, um, changed the tone at this company. The pushback we sometimes get from executives, certainly we didn't get this from Jonathan, but sometimes people just say, I'm so overwhelmed with priorities. You know, I, I already heard you want us to double our earnings. You want our financials by the 15th of the month. We, you want us to decarbonize, add diversity, and on and on and on. And now you want me to teach financial literacy, drive employee engagement, make everyone an owner. I just can't do it all. And the unlock, and Jonathan got there way earlier than, than many others, the unlock is if you do those last few things well, then everything else that came before it is a lot easier. If you've got a more stable workforce that's more engaged on the job, has a stake in the outcome, all the other operational initiatives are going to be easier to accomplish. Do you have a time horizon in your head at KKR about how long you're likely to hold this? Yeah, we're, net, we're not in a hurry. So I would say KKR is distinguished in taking our time. We've owned businesses for 20 years before. It takes as long as it takes. Our base case would be this is, you know, five, six, seven years. We've got a bunch of things we want to accomplish. Um, maybe it becomes a great public company someday. We'll see. But we're not in a hurry. So five, six, seven years, maybe longer. Uh, over that course, I mean, there are things you'll do behind the scenes, Jonathan, to improve things. What about in terms of the books you publish? What are the categories that you're looking at right now that you think are growth categories in terms of attractiveness of books? Well, uh, we're getting into the, uh, the Latino market more. Obviously, almost 20% of the American public is uh, from the Latin American uh, background, and uh, that, that audience hasn't really been reached very well by book publishers. So that's a big one. Um, we're getting more into science fiction and fantasy. We hadn't really been publishing very many books in that category for some reason. We want to be publishing more business books on an international level. I mean, there are so many categories that we're not in right now. 